here at Jelina Station in Slovakia and I'm just going to say a few words about the role of the railways in the genocide and every journalist always hopes to stumble on an invaluable source and when I was looking into this I found this extraordinary book by somebody called Simone Gigliotti, an Italian, called The Train Journey, which talks about the role of the railways. And if that sounds like sort of nerdy inside baseball knowledge that really isn't connected with the main subject, it most definitely isn't. Because it's no e exaggeration to say that without the Deutsche Bahn, Deutsche Reichsbahn, the German National Railway and the Polish Ostbahn, the, the genocide of the Second World War would never have taken place. And one of the extraordinary things I discovered reading this book was that it only took 2,000 trains to almost entirely liquidate the Jews of Europe. As I said, without the railways, there would have been no final solution. It took, for instance, in 1944, August, May to August 1944, just 147 trains to transport 450,000. I'll say that again. It took just 147 trains in 1944 to transport almost the entire Jewish population of Hungary of 450,000 people. And in all, only 2,000 trains carried European Jewry to the concentration camps. Auschwitz was the busiest there were 619 trains that went into Auschwitz. Treblinka was the second busiest. There were 390 trains. In other words, the bureaucrats and officials of the German railways, you could say with typical German bureaucratic efficiency were centrally involved in the genocide and one of the shocking things that I discovered but of course it's explained by the climate of terror that already existed is that not one single there's no record of one single German railway official or employee requesting a transfer or refusing to do his duty in these transports You know, and it's worth noticing uh, all the number of trains that are going backwards and forwards behind me and it's a very busy junction here in Slovakia and it was a very busy junction in the Second World War. Jelina was the central uh, transit point for all Slovakian and Hungarian Jews. Rina would have come to Jelina. This is where transportations from different parts of Hungary and Slovakia would have met and then onward to Auschwitz and we're doing that journey today. The German railways, the Deutsche Reichsbahn, actually charged the SS for each Jew that was transported and they levered an extra charge which I found particularly shocking for cleaning the cattle cars after they had been used. Adults and children over 10 years were charged, the SS was charged by the Deutsche Reichsbahn, four Fenix per kilometer. Children under four, which is, has a gruesome irony to it, traveled free on the deportation trains. The journey in the cattle cars that were sealed, airless, loud and overcrowded, was the first traumatic nightmare, the first step in what's referred to in the studies as deculturation of the individual. 
And indeed, when, according to Simone Gigliotti, when prisoners arrived at Auschwitz, there was a great sense of relief. They didn't know what was going to face them, but the first thing that happened, the door opened and there was fresh air. And they all bundled out, well, they were forced out, um, had no idea what was going to happen. The main thing was a great relief. Rena took some four to five days to reach her destination. It's a journey we will do in 10 hours today. Um, and there was a reason for that, a particularly unpleasant reason for that, and that was that for the Deutsche Reichsbahn, the tr deportations, the transportation trains carrying Jews were considered the absolute lowest priority on a very busy rail system and um, so consequently all other trains were given priority and as a historian noted with gruesome irony um, there was no need to hurry the Jews to their destination they weren't going to be used for anything they were just going to be killed The deportations of the Jews were referred to uh, euphemistically as resettlements and the centrality of the resettlement program can be seen by the fact that the head of the department that handled resettlements was Adolf Eichmann. The creation of the illusion of safe transit by the German authorities even went so far as to create a false in a way imaginary stations um, the most famous case being the commandant of Treblinka Franz Stengel who constructed a, an imaginary station at Treblinka complete with a clock that didn't work arrows pointing to other destinations um, false timetables and even ticket windows and this was both to create the illusion for the arriving uh, passengers but also it was to it was a mechanism of repression of the truth for Stengel himself it was a way that he could convince himself that actually all he operated was a railway station and there's a very famous quote from um, I believe his f name is Franz Novak who was Eichmann's transport officer. There's a very famous quote from Franz Novak, Eichmann's transport officer, who was quoted as saying, for me, Auschwitz was nothing more than a railway station. <laughs> 